today I'm going to be talking about the lack of women's education in Ethiopia and how an educational system geared more towards women would benefit the country as a whole. Um, so here you can see Ethiopia, it's right between Somalia and Sudan, and it's one of the um, most underdeveloped countries in Africa right now. Um, only 15% of women above the age of 15 are in school right now in Ethiopia. Um, they normally drop out, so 85% of them drop out before the age of 15. Right now, 2.1 million girls ages 11 to 14 are, being, are uneducated and are not in school actively. Um, dropout rates are 37% in Ethiopia, which is very high compared to 19.2%, which is the rate for the rest of Africa. So you can see that Ethiopia um, is a lot worse than Africa as a nation. 56% of males and 66% of females are illiterate in Ethiopia, so even though for males it's a huge portion as well, um, women is 10% more like, like, likely to be um, illiterate, which just shows the gap between the genders. So obviously this is a staged photo, um, but this would kind of be what a classic classroom would look like in Ethiopia with a male teacher and a male dominant um, student base. This is actually a lot nicer than most of the classrooms are because it has books and desks and a window, um, whereas most classes wouldn't, but it would be mostly male like this one is too. Um, so some reasons that are considered valid in Ethiopia to not be in school for women is household duties. Um, girls are expected to take care of the animals, take care of the younger kids, and to do the housework. Financial problems. Um, the, the economy is really bad in Ethiopia, and most people don't have enough money to send their kids to school. Discrimination and abuse at school, I'll talk a little more about that later, but it's a really big issue for young girls especially, and young boys. Early marriage and childbirth, I'll talk about that too, but um, that's just when girls get married so young that they cannot continue going to school. Shortage of female facilities, such as segregated toilets and nurse stations. Um, risk of abduction during travel. So this is really prevalent in all of Africa, especially Ethiopia. Right now there's that um, article that's getting a lot of buzz because a bunch of, um, I think it was Ugandan girls were taken during a physics exam, which happens a lot, um, and exposure to sexual violence in school. Um, so sexual violence in secondary school, all of these facts are just for people under the age of 18. So 70% of young men in Ethiopia under the age of 18 have admitted to sexually assaulting another girl, um, and 68% of young women have experienced sexual violence. So most of this happens in school, um, whether it's peer-to-peer -peer or student-to-peer. Um, over two-thirds of the girls in school have been assaulted, and a lot of that is because they are, they are in school with males and male teachers. Um, another reason that women don't want to go to school is because when they are sexually assaulted, um, there's a term in Ethiopia called sufficient evidence, which is used by police officers and people in charge to say that a girl um, saying that she, does, that she was assaulted by someone is not enough evidence to persecute someone. So their attacker generally could get angry and hurt them even more because they know that they tried to come forward. So um, even though 70% is such a huge portion, this is also just the amount of young men who have admitted to doing it. Same with young women who have admitted to being assaulted um, because a lot of the time you can't admit to it because it would have precautions. Um, early marriage. So 60% of Ethiopian women are married before the age of 18. That would be 6 out of 10, so that would be if me, Elizabeth, and Maria were all married right now. So you can kind of tell like how many, how huge a difference that is. Um, and it's more prevalent in lower income families because even though you could send your daughter to school and hope that she'll earn a living and um, make an earning for your family, most families would rather kind of marry her off and then get a dowry from the husband's family um, and live off that income for a little bit. So it's more prevalent with people, people who have less money um, and also with lower education. Um, the younger a child is married, the less schooling they have because as soon as a girl is married to any husband, especially an older husband, they are at home doing household chores and the societally accepted norms of taking care of the family and cooking and cleaning the house. 
Um, for the small percentage of girls that do continue to go to school after they're married, their schoolwork tends to deteriorate because they don't have time to do homework and study for tests and stuff when they're already taking care of the house. So this has kind of created a stereotype and a norm that girls will fail out of school after a certain age because they don't have time to continue on with their schoolwork um, if they're married and they do continue trying to get an education. So this is a quote by a female teacher um, who worked in Ethiopia, and she said that the lessons in textbooks are either discriminatory or gender insensitive. Some titles and stories in the textbooks promote biased attitude of society, um, and her name was Anabasu Biazin. So this is just one example of how the education system is geared more towards males and females because they could have sexist or um, biased remarks even in the textbooks. So here are some proven benefits of women's education. Um, this applies to all over the world, but especially in Africa and Ethiopia. So um, the more a woman is in education, the more independent she feels, and she can create her own income and kind of make decisions for herself. So that leads to later marriage because she's in school, and then also it leads to healthier relationships because once she's above the age of 18, she can kind of more so choose her partner and they have mutual respect for each other because she's making her own income and is educated. Um, less childbirth complications come with the older a woman is when she has the child. So if she stays in schooling through her adolescent years, then she won't have a child until later and that'll lead to less complications for the mother and the child. Um, this would also lead to lower infant mortality rates. Um, right now, the highest leading cause for death in Africa is not murder or malnutrition. It's actually childbirth. So that applies to the mother and the children. And it's really unsafe because, like, over two-thirds of childbirth are held at home in unsanitary conditions with just the mother and maybe her close family or something like that. Um, also, women's education would protect against HIV and AIDS because they would know more about, like, healthy sexual relationships and things like that and actually know about the consequences of HIV and AIDS and it would also increase the number of women with earnings which would lead to healthier relationships and a higher GDP for Ethiopia. 65% um, of AIDS sufferers are women so you can kind of see that the majority is women um, especially in Ethiopia right now and there are 900,000 orphans because of AIDS in Ethiopia. Um, education will lead to awareness about HIV and AIDS because a lot of the people um, who aren't educated don't even know like what HIV or AIDS is, so it's not really prevalent in their minds, so they don't really know that it's an issue. Um, so education could really help stop the spread of that. And early marriage also spreads AIDS because often it's with an older man and a younger girl, so he might already have multiple wives or something like that. and so. He is spreading AIDS to three or four girls um, for every wife he takes on. So obviously you can't just like snap your fingers and have a better education system in Ethiopia, but some of the things that would make it better as a whole would be to have women teachers to provide inspiration for the girls to aspire to be like and role models for like educated women in front of them. Um, gender equal textbooks and lessons, which includes um, like no biased opinions, no remarks about how women are not meant to be educated and not meant to be in a position of power, especially and kind of getting rid of the traditional beliefs that women should not be in school. Um, female geared facilities like segregated bathrooms and locker rooms would really abolish the absenteeism and like the um, the taboo on women's menstrual cycles when they're in high school, and also nurse stations that are female geared. Um, also, the best thing that could happen would just be social acceptance, that women are good to be educated and they will create incomes and really um, better Ethiopia while being educated. So the overall benefits of education would be to raise the GDP, because um, this would be like a hundred percent more people earning income every year um, because all the women would be earning it. Lower mortality rates, um, this has to do with, with HIV and AIDS and also um, for like women geared uh, like jobs like gynecologists and midwives, um, something 
that could help would be to have women in these positions so they could be able to take care of other um, women and stuff like that. Healthier relationships just because people would be equal. Um, more scholars which could lead to more um, innovations and things like that for the country as a whole. Um, women geared jobs and also nationalism just because it's a country full of people who are capable and smart. That's the sign of the Do you have any questions?